You're listening to Sweep the League. Hey, this is George Iceman Gerber, and you're listening to Sweet the League Radio. After a long, 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 seems like forever holiday, Sleepy League is back here on Taco Tuesday. This, uh, ah, excuse me. This show is brought to you by MCS General Contracting, Special Leaf Tea, Castro Sun Solar, and La Cocina Taco Truck, all part of the Sweep the League family. Shout out to Jeff Garcia, Locked On Spurs, also part of the Sweep the League family. Welcome everybody that's in the chat right now. Shout out to Tim Gonzalez of the Blue Devils and the Tar Heels still suck. But if I'm not mistaken, yeah, Tar Heels are better team football wise. So we're going to let Tim uh, dwell on that. I'm one of those people affected by DirecTV. I'll get into that here in a little bit. We got a little bit of DirecTV talk. I used to have DirecTV, but then I got rid of them a long time ago because I foresaw everything that happened when, you know, the prices went up and then they were always back and forth with channels and, I'm seeing everybody in San Antonio all mad because they can't get KSAT 12. They can't watch games. They can't watch ESPN. Yeah, everybody in San Antonio sports people, you need your ESPN. So definitely, 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 definitely cancel DirecTV. Go to YouTube TV. That's what I have. I have YouTube TV. Joel Cologne, if you pay that much money to DirecTV, why not just get Fubo or YouTube TV? I mean, I've been happy with YouTube TV so far. Uh, no issues, knock on wood, that I've had. So... I'd say go YouTube TV. We're going to see uh, what the popular choice is tonight. We are waiting for uh, Derek Irvin to see he'll be on tonight. Coach Geo is on vacation. He's on a cruise. So I tried to get him to come onto the show, uh, but he's on a cruise. Uh, it's his romantic cruise type thing. We're not going to bother him. It's it's Geo. He's, he puts in the hard work, supposedly, which is like two times a week. What's up, Joel? How are you doing, man? Uh, for Joel, I'm going to go ahead and get uh, your comment, your message that you sent to me earlier. So we're going to talk about that. Uh, it's Puro Pincha Red Raiders. Alavedia, yes. Uh, Pincha Red Raiders, I guess. Yeah, it's uh, one of the Texas teams we're going to watch out. So we're going to cover a little bit of NCAA football as well with Trey Collis who's going to be joining me tonight. What's good, everyone? Been a minute for me being in the chat. How's everyone doing? Leha, everybody seems to be doing good. Appreciate you joining the chat. That's MCS General Contracting. Chris Leha here, uh, the biggest and the proud and the best bouncer of Sweep the League Appreciate you, man. The only reason to get DirecTV was because of the Sunday ticket, and they lost that exclusivity. So, yeah, I'm going to get into that as well. But like I said, we'll see if Derek Gerber is going to be joining us tonight. I sent him a text message. He hasn't responded yet. Hopefully everything's okay. Uh, but nonetheless, let us bring in our special guest. He is Gio's fill-in while Coach Gio is going to be on vacation. He's going to join us probably a couple times this week. It is the one and only Trey Collis, a former Sweep the League uh, alumni or alumnus, I guess, because you were a part of Sweep the League for a little while there, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, I, w I was on Sweep the League. I was doing like six podcasts a night every night, man. It's just, I took a break. It's great to be back. Forgot how much I miss it. Tell you invite me, like, man, mm -hmm. let's do it. I, I miss it. I miss talking sports, but I, I'm with you. Uh, I, I, I ditched Spectrum TV and went to YouTube TV and I'm a fan, dude. I'm sorry. I like it. Like, it seems I, like YouTube TV is the way to go. So, I mean, ranking it right now. So, I've had I've had them all. I've had Spectrum, of course. I mean, you're you're like 21 years old, so you don't remember these days. But um, <laughs> you, okay, well, you, you're you're still young in my book. <laughs> I had Spectrum back when it was Time Warner, but yeah. even go before that. It was Paragon Cable. I don't know if you remember Paragon Cable. You do? Okay, so it was Paragon Cable. When I was a little rug rat running around the bowling alleys and stuff, it was Paragon Cable. So, yeah, that, that's how far we go back. I mean, you know, everybody's like, Spectrum TV, Spectrum TV. No, 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 bro. It was Paragon. Yeah. And I remember Paragon because they used to be the first ones to give you the little metal, or not the metal, the wood box where you yes. to, like move the channel over. <laughs> everybody knows you move it all the way to the right. And you move the little knob and you can kind of see a little bit of something there for all you old school guys yeah. out there. You dirty guys out there. <laughs> Every now and then you'd see a clear picture for like a brief second exactly. or two. So, yeah, that was the old that. days. But it was that. It was uh, I've had AT&T U-verse, which U-verse is great. I'm not going to lie. AT&T U-verse was really good. 
but it just went up like, oh, you're paying thirty four ninety five for twelve months. Okay, after twelve months, you're paying fifty seven ninety five for the next twelve months. Cool. All of a sudden, it's hundred and forty five dollars for the remainder of the contract. You're like, holy cow! Like I'm, I'm paying like you know nine times the price of what I was paying for you know the beginning. So uh, then it was direct TV for me, man. But I, I mean. Can we just rank YouTube Trey? YouTube TV is probably the best right now. Well, it depends on what you want. Honestly, I had Fubu TV before I had YouTube TV. For college reasons, Fubu is the way to go. If you just like college, mm-hmm. you get all like you get the Big Ten Network, you get the uh, Stadium Network, you get like you get all the all the college games that you want at your exposed right there. But yeah. NFL wise, I, I downloaded it. I got. It. I love it. I, I think YouTube TV is the best way to go for everything, for sports, for movies, for everything else that uh, has all the channels in the world. It's not that expensive. I actually just got Sunday ticket on YouTube. I wasn't going to do it, but I got it yesterday. So, so how does that work? Because I was I've been bombarded with, you know, oh, you can make payments for payments. And that, but I looked at the payment. It's like eighty five dollars a month for the payment. It's one hundred and four for four months right now. So you're going to pay $104 plus the $79 for the monthly fee. So $200. Well, well, I got lucky. I actually get free because I'm a Verizon customer. So I upgrade. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. If you're a Verizon customer, you get free YouTube TV? If you upgrade, if you got a new phone or got a new upgrade, you can get YouTube t- or a um, Sunday ticket on them for the first year. So all I got to do is go get a phone. I'll go get a phone tomorrow. <laughs> that's the case. I, I don't know if the promo is still going, but that's what they're banking on. I'm like, all right. So I already had, had it. And then I was like, well, 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 you can upgrade your service. So I upgraded to the un- unlimited, unlimited plan, whatever that means. I can never go over gigabytes or whatever. But they said, yeah, you can get Sunday ticket now. I'm like, okay. Wow. Okay. Well, now, um, now you've yeah. got me intrigued because I didn't want to pay $200 for four months. To get, you know, and at that, I mean, YouTube TV, you're still dragging like 10 seconds because Derek would call me on the phone be like, did you see that pass? I'm like, Not- oh, there it is. There it is. There's the pass. I'm already, you know, lagging behind so much. But yeah, the only reason why people got direct TV, to be honest with you, was because of an NFL ticket. Yeah. Now NFL ticket's not even there. So now it's on YouTube TV. So it doesn't surprise me that direct TV doesn't give a crap about their customers because... There's no reason to have direct TV anymore. Mm-hmm. Like, period. I guess it's what it's an AT and T thing. So they mm-hmm. might just be giving it away for free with AT and T now. Like yeah. Customers. Well, direct TV. They're trying the streaming network. They're trying to go like YouTube TV, where you don't need into uh, satellite dish anymore. They you can just stream it uh, like you do YouTube TV. But even that, that's even more expensive. Than what you get for YouTube TV right now. So YouTube TV. I honestly think YouTube TV is the best. Uh, like I'm paying like 75 bucks and I get like 200 channels. Yeah. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm very impressed. It has not froze up on me. I can watch anywhere I go. I can family share. You can share with your family up to five or six screens. I can't remember, but yeah. I'm very impressed with YouTube TV. Yeah. I'm sticking with YouTube TV for a while. Tim Gonzalez, I'm old school. I'm still with cable. So, I mean, cable's cable, man. I mean, it is what it is. If you want to stick with cable, then however, hold on, Tim, are you, are you affected by the direct TV thing? If you guys have cable, which one is it, bro? Ah, Tim, you have been called out. You did say you had direct TV, but then you said you have cable. Which one is it? Tim Gonzalez, hey, Trey. Uh, are you a Blue Devil fan, Trey? I forgot. I am a Blue Devil that's, that's, fan. Why do I only know Blue Devil people on this damn I, show? I, I, I am a Blue Devil basketball, not football, but I am a basketball. blue. I'm a, I'm a Blue Devil, and I'm very excited for this football season, man, or basketball season. Man, I, I just want to know what this this upcoming star is going to give us. And future, no Spurs yeah. pick Cooper <laughs> Fly. He's not going to be a Spurs after. Are you telling me the Spurs aren't going to tank for him? Uh, no. Well, they're going to tank, but they're not going to get bad <laughs> enough to to get Cooper Flag. Are you gaslighting us, Tim? That's what Joel Colon wants to know. He says he has DirecTV stream. Joel's in here saying, "I haven't had cable in ages. I roll with Sling and a few streaming services. That's all I need." So. Uh, services wise, I I mean, to be honest, I'm paying just as much f- to watch something that I was, you know, than I was when I was paying cable because we've got 
obviously YouTube TV. We've got Netflix, Hulu, Disney, uh, Amazon Prime. I just found out that my wife has. Um, what is the other one? <laughs> yeah, Peak. I mean, well, the reason why is because I'm like, hey, I want to see the boys. I haven't seen that show, The Boys, yet. Oh, I've got Prime. When did we get Prime? Like, well, I have an Amazon account, so we get Prime. I'm like, oh wow, okay. I don't know how the stuff, man. But you know, we've also got was it Peacock TV? We we have every. I'm like, holy cow, we're still paying, you know, like two bajillion dollars for to watch stuff. So I totally get it. That's not cable, Tim. Uh, I'm pissed. Need my ACC network and KSAT 12. Well, go to YouTube TV, Tim. You can go to YouTube TV. You yeah. can always go off air antenna for KSAT. So with KSAT, well, why, so why do you got to do that? Why not just get the free week of YouTube TV? See if you like it. If you don't like it the first day, you can still cancel and still have six free days. And but if you do like it, keep it. And you only pay. You can get the base plan for sixty nine or seventy bucks. I mean, what's what's the point of go getting an antenna? Just get KSAT when you can get it right there with all these <laughs> other. I, I just don't understand it. I get it, man. I get it. I get it. It's just, you know, people just talk. About it. I get, I could get the Sunday ticket with a student uh-huh. prize, but then I won't get to meet, I won't go meet all my fam, my fall family at the three leg monkey for Patriots games. Oh, well, how about you get the student prize uh-huh. for Sunday ticket and pass it along to me? I'll pretend to be a student. I'm, I'm a college dropout. So, I mean, I, I, I wonder if I should just register for school and just not go. And uh-huh. not get it. I kind of wanted to see if you can register as a student because I think I did that a couple of years ago when DirecTV had it. And no, they, if you lived in an apartment, they would let you get direct with the student pass. That's what it was. And then mm. YouTube got it. And that I was very upset. And then I was like, all right, I'm switching to YouTube TV. And then they wanted $500. I'm like, nope. So, yeah, it, I mean, I love Sunday ticket. I love NFL football. Sucks. I can't watch my Falcons unless they're on national TV, but I'm not paying 500 or whatever to to uh, do anything like that. That that's crazy. Uh, Jacob Eriks, I subscribe to the stick. Well, I mean, there are certain legal quote illegal quote legal stuff that you can get and watch certain things on. But I'm not going to get too much into that. I don't want to get any type of uh, emails threatening anything that we do on the show. Oh <laughs> well, uh, they verify the registration. Well. We can always we can always work around that. Cooper Flag and Blue Devils will play the SM S play SMU this season, Trey. So I know. I mean, I know you. I don't know if you watch every show that we do, but I mean, I I always have to put up with all you Blue Devil people all the time. I don't know why. Hey, it's not too late to come over to the dark. No, no, screw the dark side. I (laughs) it's there, man. We're we're always welcoming. I. I have a dream of going into Cameron Indoor Stadium just to start a fight. That's I do. I'm wondering how many I can knock out before I get knocked out. That's I say what you want, but I think sweep the league. I think we need to get like a sponsorship or whatever, and I think that we, <laughs> they need to fly us out to a North Carolina Duke game in Cameron Indoor for that. I think that would be great. I would fight somebody. I no, you wouldn't. Would no, I would probably you're fight nice somebody. Guy. You wouldn't fight anybody. It would be okay. So, in my mind, it would be <laughs> like that one scene in The Matrix where Neo's fighting oh, like oh. a million Agent Smiths and he's just kicking all their butts. That That's in my mind. But ideally, I would probably be able to knock out maybe three or four Agent Smiths before I'm done. I mean, I'm no Neo, that's for sure. <laughs> I mean, I can, I can barely dodge a meal and you want me to dodge bullets and stuff. No, I I can't do anything like that, man. There's no way about that. But uh, yeah, maybe one day we'll go. Thank you, Trey. I've been trying to tell Rudy to come and join now. I'm not, that's not the good side. It's the terrible side. That is Duke. So nonetheless, man, we're going to get into some uh, talk here. We're going to talk some college football, break down the weekend, maybe look a little bit forward to this coming weekend, talk a little WNBA. Joel presented something to me uh, in the DMs or on Twitter or X, whatever you kids are calling it today. Has to do with Caitlin Clark. I had kind of seen this stat already, but uh, we'll talk a little bit about that. We'll make some mention of it. Also, NBA players going overseas to play, not wanting to sign their NBA contract. I mean, is the NBA, maybe they just don't, who knows? That's why we're hoping that Derek comes on because, man, Derek comes on and kind of explain that overseas thing. If not, we'll get to it here uh, with Trey and I. Cameron is so tiny. Was watching some videos on the inside small venue, rabbit fans. 
Rabbit fans, yes. Terrible fans, yes. Small venue, yes. Um, tiny, Terrible yes. fans. They're the most loyal fans in the world. They're loyal because they have nothing. What are you going to be loyal to? I mean, they their football program sucks. I mean, they're their right. lacrosse they're- team is, well, we're not going to get into that. I mean, they're all behind bars, aren't they? I mean, all they have is, yeah, all they have is the blue of the basketball team. So, I mean, yeah, they're going to be loyal to basketball. That's all. They, they don't even fill their stands. There's, I mean, there's, let's be real, man. There's more people at the worst Mexican restaurant in San Antonio set to eat than there is in Car- and the uh, field that they play in over at Duke. Oh, I mean, there's, yeah. nobody watches that football team. Well, That's not terrible. the football team. Well, they've been, well, they lost our head coach at Texas and in, which I, uh, which, Whatever, I'll get in that. Oh, yeah. Later, okay. but, yeah. but Duke actually has, for football, they have been down, but they may remember a couple of years when Johnny Menzel, they played Johnny Menzel in the Cotton Bowl. They went to the Cotton Bowl game. They went yeah. to uh, – they, they knocked off Clemson the first night of the season last year. I mean, they, they have talented uh, – they, they, they've, been, they, yeah, they've been getting some talented young players over there at Duke. It's just – it's it's a basketball school. It, it, it's like Kansas. It's not gonna never gonna be a football school. It's always gonna be a basketball school. Yeah, it's always gonna be a basketball. But you can't say that about Kansas. Not this year. I mean, no, Kansas, Kansas has a legit good. shot this year. So I'm telling you, I'm telling you, they have a legit shot. FSU starting no and two. Uh, yeah, we would not make that. Uh, mm-hmm. We would not bring that up till later on because that's terrible. Come on, Rudy, the lacrosse thing was a hoax. They all got vindicated. I I don't know. I just. That shows you how much I know about Duke. I just know crap was going on about Duke, so I don't care. And I, I made Tim mad. Hey, hey, watch it, Rudy. Really. <laughs> right, hey, I mean, you're going to come at me with Tar Heel stuff. I got to come back at y'all with Blue Devil stuff. And you know what? Then we're just getting started when it comes to the Blue Devil and Tar Heel stuff. We used to be worse than this. Trey can value oh, yeah. that. It used to be a lot worse. The only thing me and you agree on was... <laughs> Yeah, it seems like every guest, every person we have on here, I'm a Blue Devil fan. Like, geez, we, can we find somebody else besides Blue Devil people? No, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. So let's cover off some of the uh, NCAA football here. This is going to be Trey Collis, Rudy Campos Jr. Still waiting to see if Derek Irwin will come on. If not, he should be back on tomorrow. But let's get into some college football talk. All right, so this first segment is brought to you by MCS General Contracting, the best contracting out there in San Antonio. And you know what? They go beyond San Antonio. They cover everything outside of San Antonio as well. Just give them a call, whatever you need. Is it the driveway? Is it the patio? You know what? Sometimes they just give you a porch. When you buy a brand new house, they give you a little slab. You want to make it better. You want to make it a big, nice porch. You need that big extra driveway to put all 30 cars like Trey has, his Lamborghinis and his Maseratis. He called MCS General Contracting, and he is getting his driveway put in. But you know what? They also do foundation work. Or if you own a business or something, you need a parking lot, you need to repave, you need redone completely, or you just need to add it. Call MCS General Contracting, proud sponsors of Sweep the League. So, oh, yeah, yeah, man. Okay, so, uh, see, Tim's in here. Everybody gets me. Top player, Rudy, watch it. My, uh, Malik Murphy. Okay. Yeah, it is Malik Murphy, whatever. Um. Uh, First and first, first and foremost, let's get into the rankings here, man. We're going to get into some rankings here. So these are the official rankings starting today. And let me blow up the screen. All right. So for the AP top 25, it's Georgia, Ohio State, Texas, Alabama, Notre Dame, Ole Miss, Oregon, Penn State, Missouri, Michigan are your top 10. Really no changes on the eight, on the uh, coaches poll with the exception of Ole Miss is five. Uh, Oregon is six. They looks like they dropped uh, Missouri down to number ten. So, are you surprised by the top ten? Do you feel someone should be a little bit higher? Someone should be a little bit lower? You can go. I guess we'll go with the AP top twenty-five here. Me personally, I not. I'm not a. I'm not all mad with week uh, with after week one as far as the rankings go. Uh, I, I like Georgia, Ohio State, Texas. I think I would possibly put Texas at two, but that's just me picking them to win the national championship this year. So that I'm being kind of biased on that, but I don't have any issues with the top four. Notre Dame at five, man, to me, I agree more with the coaches poll. I don't have Notre Dame at five. I could easily put Ole Miss at five. 
I mean, if we're we're going crazy, I don't like that Utah is not in the top ten. That that's the one that kind of ticks me and irks me is Utah's not in the top ten. But for Trey Collis, how does this top ten look? And like I said, do you see somebody that needs to be higher there? I mean, of course you got Kansas, the other basketball school, number nineteen right. on the AP the poll there, but. Do you feel anybody should be higher? Because I have a couple teams that should be higher than where they're ranked right now. I'm going to give you – I mean, it's like you said, Rudy, it's hard after week one because, like, you have – like, yeah, you had Notre Dame go to Texas A&M, and that was a great game as well. You had LSU-USC, a classic game as well. I mean, that was a great game. And then, of course, you have Florida State who – I had them win the ACC, but that's not happening. Oh, a lot of people did. Like, Except Derek. Have, yeah, and Derek's a genius. I, I, but who I should have had was Miami. Miami, I know it's just week one, and I don't know how good Florida is, but that mm-hmm. Miami offense, it, it's good. Like that, that team is loaded. I'm not saying they're back, but if you're just going after week one, I would probably, man, I'll put Miami up there. Over Penn State really didn't look that great to me. I would drop them out. I mean, they didn't look all that impressive to me. Ohio State, they play cupcakes. Georgia beating Clemson. But Clemson is no longer Clemson that we always thought because Dabo Sweeney is an idiot. And I used to love him as a head coach, but he's a stupid idiot who doesn't go in the transfer portal and try to get guys when you have this tool for you. And there's a lot of guys who can go there, but he doesn't want to do that. He just wants to do groups. But he's, he's not changing with the time. So Clemson's never going to be back again. But, man, I um, – it's just hard after week one because they play these cups, but I'm with you. I'm all on the Utah Utes this year. I have them win the Big 12. I think they're going to dominate. I think they're going to be great. I think they're going to be in the top. I think they're definitely going to be in the top 10, maybe top seven at the end of the year. Missouri is another one, but Oregon, Oregon and Ohio State really didn't look that impressive to me this weekend. And that's hard for because I actually do like both those schools, but I am a Texas Longhorn fan. That's my true and true. They, I know it's Colorado State. Colorado State has been down, but they're starting to get better throughout the last couple of years. They improved their record. But scoring fifty over fifty points in an Arch Manning mm-hmm. sighting who looked phenomenal in his back. I know it's again with backups, but Texas looks legit. Like they, I, I, there is nothing wrong with that team because nothing wrong with that team right now. You saw Arch Manning and the second string just go in there and play. I, and again, I mean, again, it wasn't against like a massive big time team, but. Just looking at them being in sync. Now we'll get to the game coming up this weekend. We're gonna we're gonna showcase it a few times this weekend because that's probably one of the two biggest games for, uh, in Texas. Basically, this weekend or for Texas because you have the Longhorns in Michigan and you have Texas State against UTSA. That, that's a massive game. Right? I don't think people understand how mad you may think. Oh, you know, it's Texas State. It's UTSA. I mean, why are we talking about them? BS. You have to talk about that because. Oh, you know what? I'm going to save that. I'm going to get into that. Texas and Michigan is a big game that we got to watch out. But looking at, you know, Quinn Ewers, looking at Arch Manning, it just has that feel that this Texas team and knock on wood, barring injury, they've got to be talked about as a top three team, more than likely a top two team this season. I, I truly believe in Georgia. I truly believe in Ohio State. But if we're talking SEC, I have Texas over Georgia. We're going to see that game in Austin here in a few weeks. Texas has a pretty, pretty sizable schedule coming up here. Um, that's going to be kind of brutal for them. But what where I'm seeing on the whole Texas side is I, I, I'm not saying I don't see weaknesses. I see weaknesses on there. But they. They need to, and you know, Tim made a good point here in a minute. I'll share it in a minute. Mm-hmm. It's healthy. The running backs got to stay healthy. The players got to stay healthy. I'm not so worried so much about the quarterback position Mm-mm. because if Quinn goes down, I have enough confidence in Arch Manning to you won't see a Colt McCoy thing happen and then you lose the national championship. Mm -hmm. You won't see a Quinn Ewers go down again and Texas kind of struggles throughout the season. Now you've got Arch Manning. He's ready. So there's no reason why I don't have Texas going as far as long as they stay healthy. But another team that you mentioned was Miami. Miami, I think, deserves to be in the top Top 10. That, that's another team. If I'm dropping teams out of the top 10, I don't like Oregon in the top 10 right now. 
Um, I, I, I could actually put them at number 10. Uh, Oregon right there. Michigan, I'm not. It's tough. I would say 10 is okay for them, but I would probably put them at 11. Utah and Miami, to me, make the case to be in the top 10. My, one of my Heisman Trophy candidates is Cam, uh, Cam Ward. So mm-hmm. he balled out. I, I loved it. Cam Rising is the other one. Beck is the other one. Uh, yeah, Beck's the other one. So those are my three Heisman candidates. And I don't know, man. Is there another team? I mean, the only thing I can, the only other team that I can say maybe should be a little bit higher. Uh, if I'm making a case, maybe Louisville, but I kind of like them at 22. Uh, Kansas, I'm okay with them being there. Maybe USC, but even USC, ah, uh, I don't, I don't know. You know what? I'm just gonna make the case for Utah and Miami, man. I don't know who you else, who else you might have. Yeah, I'm with you. I, like I said, I like Miami. I like Ward. I like what the, they're doing over there. As long as they, as long as they take a knee instead of run the ball and don't fumble, it, Miami is going to be a great football program. Which I, I like what they're doing over there. Oregon just, it, Oregon's a tough one. It's there. Remember them and USC and UCLA and all them are actually in the Big Ten this year. So does Oregon have the defense, the offensive line to stack? Because they they're not as big. To go against those Big Ten guys like the Michigan, Ohio States of the world, even probably the USC this year as well. Yeah, I'm just I was just not impressed. Like, yeah, they blew them out, but I was just not impressed with Oregon at all this this week. Uh, I a USC is hard because LSU it always lo- always loses the first game of the season, and somehow they always come back and win the rest of their games, and they're going to be fun. I don't know what US, but one thing I am impressed with with USC is their defense. Last year, they couldn't stop a nosebleed from hell. I mean, I'm just being honest with you. <laughs> uh, I mean, Caleb Williams can score 45 points last year, and they still lose a game by 10 points because the defense can't stop anybody. Uh, yeah. But this year, they held LSU, who had a great uh, – I, I thought a great offense. Uh, not a great, probably a pretty good offense, but only held them over 20 points. I mean, that's – that's impressive for the USC and uh, Lincoln Riley and his de- – because he never played defense at Oklahoma either. So I, I think the USC, if they can keep it up, I think USC might make some noise in the Big Ten this year. But honestly, these rankings don't matter. They really it's don't. Yeah. They, they really don't. But I will shout out UTSA Roadrunners. They actually got some votes to be in the top 25 this week, which I don't understand. And I'm a UTSA fan. I love going to those games. I love everything about Roadrunner. I love – but they did not look that good against uh, who they play. Ken, how do you say that? Ken, uh, Kennesaw. Kennesaw State. State. Yeah, they, they did not look that good. But yeah, I don't know if you saw it on Twitter or whatever. But the top three games this week was the Texas Michigan game. Then they had the UTSA versus Texas State game. So yeah. both, both that that's going to be a great game to watch. So Texas games at eleven. Then you can go step back and watch UTSA play after that. Uh, but like I said, these rankings don't mean anything. It's all going to change. But I think the top two teams. I think Ohio State's going to choke again. They're going to lose. They're probably going to lose a Penn State or someone else around. I think that b- the game between Texas and Georgia is basically going to be who's going to be the number one seed and who's going to be the, the number five seed come the playoff time. That's what I think it's yeah. going to come down to. And if Quinn Ewers can stay healthy in the games in Texas, I'm putting my money on Texas. But but whoever loses that game is not out of the playoffs. It's just who's going to be the one seed, who's going to be the wild card facing the top uh, the power five school that comes with it's Liberty or Boise state or whoever the case may be. But I think I after don't even know go, Liberty, man, it's tough for Liberty because I don't even think we're going to get, let's get into some scores, man. Let's get into a couple of scores. Um, but yeah, even with Liberty, I don't like, I, I, I'm taking a, and you know what? I hate using mid major. I hate using mid major because I don't consider teams mid majors. You're in division one for a reason. Exactly. Um, but you know, for the the middle middle of the pack conferences, I don't see Liberty. I I honestly, my twelfth team in is UTSA, and you know, I've been saying UTSA because if their only loss is to Texas, a top three, top two team, especially if Texas finishes the season number one, I mean, yeah. that is a good loss for UTSA, well, especially if they keep it close. You, you have them beating Memphis. I have Memphis in as a pet mine. I have okay. So that is they have three tough games. UTSA. Now, I will consider the Army game tough. I, I do consider that tough for them. But I, I think they'll be able to get it done this year. 
Memphis is a tough one, Texas, and of course this weekend at Texas State. So UTSA is going to have Texas State and then Texas, I believe, right back to back. Right. So I expect them to lose to Texas. I expect them to beat Texas State. The Memphis game, I truly, truly expect them to be ready and win that game. Whoever wins that game, as long as they only have one or no losses going into that game, is who I think the final, the 12th team would be. It's, it's going to be the Memphis or it's going to be uh, UTSA. It's going to be one of those teams, unless UTSA shits the bed today, this weekend against Texas State. And then they're going to lose to Texas. I mean, there's no way they can beat Texas. No, I'm not going to. I'm not going to sugarcoat it and say they have a chance. You know, for me, they have a chance. They may go up seven zero on Texas. They may go up fourteen zero on Texas. But mm-hmm. it's we're not going to lie. When they played them well, a couple of years back, yeah. they were right there. I, I think they even held the lead. If I'm not they sure, they had the lead going into halftime, and then you just saw the the death of the Texas team with all of it. And then UTSA lost like a big a uh, couple of offensive line. I was at that game, and I'm going to be at that game in a couple of weeks too. Uh, if Frank, I think Frank Harris even got a little nicked up in that game as well in a couple of years yes. ago. They had, like they, like they'll play Texas tough. I'm not in any doubt about that. But they're not going to beat Texas in Texas. I think they're going to roll over Texas Day. I just, I, I, I think this last week's game that Javen Jeff Trailer said they didn't play their best ball. They were very sloppy with everything, and uh, I, I look for him. Jeff Trailer's a great coach, and I think that he's going to correct everything. I think you're going to see a better UTSA game. I think the only losses that the UTSA is going to have uh, is Texas, and that's not even a bad loss because you're going to Austin. That's not going to count towards anything. Like anything, it just depends how bad you're going to lose. Are you going to lose by forty or fifty, or are you going to lose by respectful well, margin of twenty or fifteen? You know what I mean. I I think a good loss, and it's so funny, like, oh, this is a great loss for UTSA against Texas, but I think a good loss is to keep it under 40. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> you have bad respect for Texas. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's just, that's how good they look. Now, if they keep it under 30, it's a great loss. Yeah. I mean, as long as, to me, it's competitive, and that's what I'm saying. You've got to keep it competitive. Now, again, a loss is a loss. I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm not saying, oh, hey, you know, Go out there and lose 45 to 10, and we're good. No, you want to make it, you know, 45, 44 or something. You know, you want to win. No matter what, you want to win. Right. But it's just how you lose. If, you, if you're competitive, great. If you can compete with a Texas team, then there's no reason why you can't beat a Memphis team or any other team for that matter. And that's where I look at it. You know, there's no such thing as a moral victory, but. In some cases like this, well, there are moral victories, man. Well, here's the problem with this big tw- uh, the, the twelve team playoff because a lot of people have Boise State too. Boise State's really not going out and playing it. Like if you're an undefeated Liberty or uh, Boise State, but then UTSA goes and plays Texas, but they lose, you have that one loss. Is a committee going to hold that against them against an undefeated team like a Boise State or a Memphis or whoever the case may be, a Liberty? Uh, so that. That's the problem, and I'm I'm glad that they're putting the the one of those schools in the playoff, no matter what. I do, but I think it might need to be more. But I think the committee needs to reward like UTSA and Jeff Trailer going out and playing these top dogs like a Texas and p- doing all this. Where these others go, like Liberty, like what was it last year? Liberty, like we saw in the bowl game, Liberty didn't play anybody all year, but they were undefeated, so we had to put them in that bowl game. The big and they get annihilated by Oregon. I mean, I'm just. It, it, you got to reward these teams who go out and play top-notch competition, big brother, if the case may be. And I, just, I, I don't know, man. I, I honestly have, I have Memphis. I, I, I think Memphis is doing good. Uh, since SMU's out, I, I totally forgot they're in the ACC. With the ACC being down, I, I, SMU might get. <laughs> I mean, the, is ACC the new Pac-12? I mean, ACC is horrible. They are horrible. As you can tell by Florida State, my my ACC conference winners, Florida State, that is terrible. So terrible. I mean, I'm looking at Liberty's schedule. I mean, they played Campbell. Uh, they won 41-24. to 24. They've got New Mexico State next. They've got UTEP, which, again, UTEP's not a terrible. I mean, they have made games close. They've got the ever-so-lovely Appalachian State in a few uh, a few weeks. I mean... 
there's really not very many teams on that schedule. Exactly. I can make a case for Jacksonville State, maybe a Sam Houston, but there's yeah. really not a whole lot of teams right. in there that mm-hmm. are going to scream. Now, that's what I'm saying. They go undefeated. You can't make the case for them over a UTSA or a Memphis squad. Or you know what? I'm even going to go on a limb here. I'll go one more better. If this weekend comes and you see Texas State beating, you know, UTSA. I'm not saying, don't quote me on this because I'm not saying I'm picking UTSA. I'm not taking Texas State. But if you see Texas State win, that's a huge win for them because then they have Arizona State at home, which is a, a good program. If they win there, they could run the table. Dude. And you make the case for Texas State to get in. Yeah, I mean, if they beat Arizona State, I mean, Arizona State's not a top 25 team by any stretch of imagination, but at the same time, it's a top notch power school. It's a bigger power, conference school. Which is in the Big 12. That's a big power school. That's, it's going to boost them over a liberty, I do believe. And that's what I'm saying. Like you're, if you go, if you have an undefeated Texas State Bobcat team, and you have an undefeated Liberty team, you got to reward the, them going. Out I'm, you've got to give it to Texas State. Yeah. Their their uh, schedule is way more brutal than Liberty's is. I mean, there, there's no doubt about that. I give all the props to Texas State. I give you a lot of props. I mean, they are on the map. They are doing good. They did beat Lamar 34-27. They've been a team that's been, you know, had been wrecking. They're 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 wrecking it out, man. They're they're playing. They're playing mm-hmm. some good ball, ball football. They and are. UTSA Texas State, the rivalry's there, and it's going to be there well, this weekend. Well, isn't the head coach the old coach for uh, UIW? Yeah, yeah, that's true. There's a lot of there's a lot of San Antonio ties everywhere, man. Like, there it is, dude. San Antonio, minutes. For, for for the longest time, San Antonio, the Austin, like San Antonio, besides Texas, the, this area, the little. Metroplex, Austin, San Antonio area, like San Marcos, New Braun, all the way down to San Antonio, they weren't known for football. Like they weren't really like a college atmosphere. But now with UTSA and Texas State and Incarnate Word, and man, they're just these teams are building. And then San Antonio is doing a uh, area is doing a really good job of recruiting within the state and with everything. And it's becoming like it's it's getting big. So I'm I'm very impressed with what is going on with Texas State to UTSA, Incarnate mm-hmm. Word, and all uh, it, It's getting big. Like, you have people who actually want to go play at UTSA instead of going to Austin or because they want to stay close to home because they like Jeff Trailer, or they want to go to Texas State because they have like, they like that small-town atmosphere, but it's still big enough or far away from home where they can get away from the parents and still party and everything like that. So, it, Texas, it, it, this area is starting to hit up really good. I'm very impressed with what they're doing right now in the last five years. Yeah, and you know, I feel like uh, Jacob Berg, if UTSA can at least keep it close against Texas, it's going to heat up faster than a junky spoon. Yeah, that is very, well, very I true. That a couple of years ago in Texas, honestly, UTSA, if they had the players, they would have won that. They they, they they just got injured in the death of Texas uh, linemen just was the difference in that game. Yeah, bigger, stronger, and not saying anything negative about UTSA, but Texas at the time was a bigger and stronger team. This Texas team, is way bigger, way stronger, way quicker. I mean, it's it's a very big juggernaut that they're going to have to pull. But again, it's just how you play against them that's going to make a difference here. But before you look at Texas, you've got to get through Texas State. It's going to be a tough matchup. Normally, I'm confident in UTSA going into San Marcos and winning, but I'm not quite as confident right now. We got more college football talk. We're going to take a break. We are way past due our break, so we'll probably take a longer commercial break than normal here. Uh, it is Trey Collins, Derek Gervin, probably be on tomorrow. Coach Gio is on vacation. Rudy Campos Jr., give us a minute. We'll come back, talk some more NCAA football with you guys. Are you looking for a contracting company that gets the job done right the first time? Look no further than MCS General Contracting. MCS specializes in top quality concrete work, including patios, driveways, foundations, and swimming pools. The team of experts are dedicated to delivering exceptional results and unparalleled customer satisfaction. At MCS General Contracting, they're not just hardworking, 
They're local. Based in San Antonio, they are committed to building relationships and trust within the community. That's why MCS guarantees your satisfaction. They pride themselves on getting the job done right the first time, every time. So why wait? Contract MCS General Contracting today to schedule your project and experience the difference for yourself. MCS General Contracting. Building a better San Antonio, one project at a time. Proud sponsors of Sweep the League. Howdy from Texas. You've got to be tired of the sizzling electric bills in the Texas heat, right? Well, partner, we've got the solution for you. Introducing Castro and Sun Solar, harnessing the power of the sun to save you some serious cash. Their top-notch solar panels will have you soaking up the savings in no time. Imagine lower electric bills, a reduced carbon footprint, and the satisfaction of going green. Their expert team will take care of everything from installation to maintenance. We're talking hassle-free, worry-free, and stress-free solar solutions. So why wait? Join the solar revolution with Castro and Sun Solar. Let the Texas sun shine bright and your savings shine even brighter. Castro and Sun Solar, empowering your home one sunbeam at a time. Call them today and let's get this solar party started. Spurs fans, are you ready to stay ahead of the game of the San Antonio Spurs with the best coverage in the business? Tune in to Locked on Spurs, the daily podcast that brings you expert analysis, exclusive interviews, and all the latest news and updates for your silver and black. Join Jeff Garcia, the most informative and entertaining host in the game, as he breaks down all Spurs news and notes, interviews the biggest names, and keeps you locked into all things Spurs. From Monday to Friday, get ready to start your day with the best Spurs coverage in the business. Don't miss out on the expert opinions, the hot takes, and the can't-miss guests. Make sure you're locked in with Locked On Spurs. Subscribe to their YouTube channel now and stay ahead of the game all season long. Locked On Spurs. It's the best Spurs coverage in the business. Don't miss out. Pops the mastermind, got the team what we need. Five rings deep, we the dynasty kings. From the Alamo Dome to the Banners. All right, welcome back to Sweep the League. It is Trey Collins. It is Rudy Campos Jr. Derek Irving should be back tomorrow. Coach Gio on vacation. I swear that guy has more vacation than anyone I have ever met in my life. You, you sign the guy to a contract, and he gets paid, and he gets everything he wants. And I didn't read the last page where he had put unlimited amount of vacation and PTO. So. Yeah. He's still in yeah. a stage with his girl. I mean, it's, <laughs> hey, man, you know what? It's date night every night for him. I have no problem with that. You know, he he got it. He wanted it. He got it. He held my uh, my head over the fire. So he he got paid and he got his deal. So no questions. JC, special leave in here, man. Appreciate you joining us tonight, JC. Everything you do for us here at Sweep the League. Uh, it says afternoon. Uh, it is afternoon probably where you're at. I think he's in town. So it's evening here, afternoon there. Masha, Josh, had bow, of course. You know, we give everybody, all JC, we give him all the credit here. Uh, Tim's making a case for Appalachian State possibly to make it in if they run the table. I'm going to pull their schedule up in a minute. UTSA versus Texas State on ESPN Sunday, Saturday afternoon. I had something to do Saturday. I don't anymore. I kind of regret it because I, I had a chance to cover the UTSA uh, Texas State game, but I said, oh, I got something to do. I can't be there. Now I can, so oh well. I'm gonna catch it on TV. Yeah, I'm gonna catch it on TV. UTSA did get the dub, but they didn't smoke the team the past week and kind of got me worried about Texas State. I that that's a good point. I mean, they got the win over Kansas State, but it didn't look good. But I'm gonna I'm gonna put the the uh, I'm gonna put the baby to bed here, Jacob Eric, and it's it was week one, man. It's yeah. week one. It's it's hard to come out like. 
Alabama and these teams and go 63 to zero or something like that, you know, Ohio State to, you know, 69 to 12 or whatever. It's hard to do that, you know, for any school. Nonetheless, you know, the schools that are, you know, playing, you know, like I said, you know, Monmouth State of, you know, Delaware going up against Alabama. It's like, it's, it's just week one. So, don't let week one get you. A lot of the cobwebs are there. You know, kids are coming off practices. It's their first time playing a game. Sometimes you have some young guys like sophomores, juniors that are playing now. So they didn't get a whole lot of playing time. It's a little bit different feeling when you're on the sidelines and not playing on the field. So we'll see what happens this weekend. Real quick, uh, yeah, Tim has a question for you. Question for Trey. I'm an ACC fan. Is this Miami's year to come out of the ACC? And if so, who's second? Virginia Tech, SMU, or NC State? Virginia Tech, no, Tim. You've been trying to convince all of us that Virginia Tech's a team. No, we're not going to do that. No, not at all. No. Everyone thought Virginia Tech. I was never a big fan of Virginia Tech. And uh, I know they had, like, like what was it, 22 returning starters? Some ridiculous number like yeah. that. Uh, but Vanderbilt, man, they just showed, like, I was very impressed with Vanderbilt, the way they, they – they had the lead, and then they gave up the lead, but then they had a chance to win it in regulation to miss the field goal, but then they didn't let it go down or let, let them bring them down. They went in overtime and won against Virginia Tech. I'm not a big fan of the Hokies. Uh, I do believe it is Miami's year this year. Uh, Clemson, Florida State, we all see what Florida State is. Florida State's horrible. Uh, DJ, I cannot pronounce his last name. I'm sorry, so I'm just going to call him DJ. There's a reason why he left Clemson. Yeah, he had a good year at o- Oregon State. But that was because all the pressure was off him. Oregon State wasn't supposed to do anything anyway. So, but now the pressure is back on him at a big school at Florida State. You can see that he just not he's just not that guy. Uh, I do like Ward, and I do like this Miami team. It was like I I I I regret not picking them because Miami always finds out one way to choke one big game. <laughs> but this year, I just don't see the ACC. That I think this is Miami's year. I one think team. Gonna, one team will get in. One one team will get in. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't sleep on SMU though. SMU is a power like they're they're really good school. But I do think Ward's a real deal. I think he's my sleeper. I think he's my Heisman Trophy pick right now. Uh, I got a pick, but I do think this is Miami's year as long as they take a knee instead of running the football. They'll be all right. <laughs> I don't like SMU because they- NC State's also another sleeper. I forgot about them. They're, well- they're- we're going to find out a lot about them this Saturday against Tennessee. Yeah, NC State, yeah, but SMU, everybody makes the case for SMU. I just, I mean, when you have that kind of a struggle against Nevada. But Nevada is not. Me. Now, Nevada's not bad, but, but it shouldn't okay. have been as close. 39-24, I'm okay. But like you said, it's the cobwebs, right? Like, this is one thing I, yeah, do, this is right. one thing I do hate about the NCAA football uh, season they don't get scrimmage like they don't get scrimmages they don't get a preseason they got to go straight week yeah. one like Florida State had to go all the way to Dublin uh, Ireland to go play their conference game against Georgia Tech and then they got to yeah. play like they don't have a scrimmage like they don't have inner like invite teams down to have scrimmages against them like the NFL does or have the pre like two or three pre that's the one thing I do wish the NCAA would look at is try to have, like maybe a preseason game one or two just to get the co- so they can get it going get the cobwebs out like you said it, like, week one's always a hard one to adjust to because it because you don't because like you said there's a fresh there's sophomores juniors playing that have not played before it's the first time in a big hundred thousand most of these players have not played over in front of a hundred thousand people before and, and that it's different atmosphere in college football and I, I think week two is a more tell week two to week three is what you're going to see but I would not sleep on NC State I think that that's going to be a sleeper team in the ACC, but like I said, the ACC is down. I do think this is Miami's year, though, as long as everyone stays healthy. I, they have the skill players. They have the defense. They have the, the uh, head coach to get them there. The ACC is yeah. down. This, this should be their year. You know, it's funny because uh, they said Tim won't be able to watch the game because of DirecTV. Remember, he doesn't have, so I don't know if Tim's going to be able to watch it. I'll I'll stream it for you, Tim. You go Listen you, here. Okay. Listen here, Tim. <laughs> Friday afternoon... Subscribe to YouTube TV. Get that week yeah, trial. Why not? And then cancel it after that. <laughs> why not? Yeah, just cancel it. Just stream it. You might love it. Just keep it. It's an expense, man. It is an expense. <laughs> Give you that. It's, it's a terrible expense to have. The irony of that is SMU getting the death penalty all those years ago now. That was a perfect. I, you know, that. Exactly. That, that exactly. brings up a massive point because then you look at the whole Chris Weber fiasco at, you know, at mm-hmm. Michigan and. 
Uh, of course, the Reggie Bush thing. I mean, obviously, he gave him back his Heisman, but there's so much more that you can go back and say, okay, we need to reinstate this. We need to reinstate that. I am, I'm all up for that. A hundred percent. You know, if you're, if it's legal now, it wasn't legal then they cheated then. Oh, right, well, big deal. I mean, if you're not cheating. You're not trying. That's what I've always said. I don't, to me, I all these schools have cheated and Nick Saban was probably the world's worst at it, but now that it's all legal at it. And that's why he retired. Cause he couldn't like, Oh, everyone caught up to me. So now I'm going to retire and go on college game day. Yeah. You say what you want to Nick Saban cheated all through get all his great Alabama players. And LA. there's no way. I mean, I, everyone cheated. I, it's just not legal now. It's ridiculous. You know, I have a, I have a, I had a thought this actually after this weekend, I had a thought Brian Kelly gets fired from LSU. You know they're knocking on Saban's door. Saban's not going back. Don't Saban, say never. Saban is not going back. He has a comfy gig at College Game Day. He does not like this new trend. He doesn't want to rec- He doesn't want to do the free agency. He remember he went to the NFL and he did well, not like it. And there's that's the thing. what NCAA is right now is a free agency in NFL right now. But there's a thing floating around now. I I'm going to start this. You know, I kind of said it a couple of. Well, a while back, a long while ago when all this was going on, I said if college teams are going to be paying players, you know, through NIL deals and all that stuff, you know, they have companies come in, they pay the players, perfect. Then what a college needs to do is it needs to focus on becoming a front office where you have Nick Saban, say, say Brian Kelly gets fired, Saban's the head coach. He shouldn't have to worry about that. He should be able to go to a VP of operations or a general manager and say, okay, this is my list of players. This is who we're recruiting. You know, this is kind of what they want. Can you make it done? Can you make it a done deal? So I would rather have my college say I'm, I'm okay. Say I'm North Carolina and I have Mac Brown. I don't want to leave it on Mac Brown's shoulders to get NIL deals done to do this and that. I'd rather have a GM at the college or it could be the president of the college, whoever, or, you know, yeah, hell, get a freaking, uh, what do they call it, an athletic director, which they do have athletic directors. Just get them to focus on the NIL deals. They give you the players like, hey, these are the players that we're looking at in the transfer portal. These are players that we're recruiting. What can we do to get them here? I need you to focus on getting them here. Right. That's where I say it should be. Then Saban is good. Dabo Sweeney should be good. A Dabble, lot of these coaches. Dabble Sweeney's not adapting with the times. Dabble Sweeney's. Well, that's what I'm saying. Get somebody to do it for him. You just focus on coaching. He won't do it, though. I agree with you. I, I Well, Colorado State's actually doing that right now. I don't know if you saw that game. They have uh, well, uh, the famous running back for the Denver Broncos. What was his name? Davis. Terrell Davis? Terrell Davis. Yeah. He's actually an ambassador for Colorado State and actually doing that to help boost their program a little bit. So it is starting to be done a little bit, but I just don't – I think Nick Saban, he's older. He doesn't want to do it anymore. I, I, I can see I, – I get your point, but I just don't see Nick Saban going back to the – College rent. I think he has a nice cushy job over there at, with Pat McAfee. And, <laughs> and I think he's gonna guys. be he's gonna be tired of it. I think he goes. I, I think he goes. I think, think he goes so? back. To I, yeah, I think he goes back. I don't to think he's going back to LSU though. Why not? I mean, a big program. Turn it back around. It's not that far. Well, Brian Kelly always does this. He always loses like the first game at LSU. And then he goes off and wins and playing for the SEC championship game. I mean, he's going to turn around. <laughs> oh, yeah, it'll turn around. I'm not saying Brian Kelly's going to get fired, but well, they, I mean, if, like, he, yeah. if he was on the hot seat. <laughs> I mean, it's like the whole – like Sark is playing for his job this year. I no mean, way in hell he's playing for Okay, him. so if Texas <laughs> if Texas doesn't make the college ball plus, which is not going to happen, it's but not. if they just fall completely flat, they Sorry. could. Yeah. We'll never say never because they, they got the rivalry game against Oklahoma. Well, yeah. They got a big game against Michigan. That If they lose those two, and then they have Georgia. That's, it's if they lose this weekend. See a three team loss going to the Big 12? It's uh, this weekend. I, and this is what I, I told Gio and Derek, and we've all agreed. If Texas loses this weekend, that seat is getting warm for Sark. This is a must why? win. Trey. This is a must win for Texas. You have a you have a non-championship Michigan team. They lost a lot of people. 
But they, they have lost Tim Harbaugh. They have def- yep, they have the majority of their defense starters coming back. No, no, but I'm saying on the offensive side, yeah, they, are, they are hurting. They lost their head coach in Harbaugh. I, and, I mean, they, they had some significant losses, but this is a game where Texas, not necessarily is going to blow them out, but they have to win. If they lose this game, it's a lot harder for Sark, and that seat gets a little warmer. Because this is a dude, this is a must win this weekend for Texas. It is an absolute must weekend. If if they get blown out, are you are you doubting me? If they get blown out by well, Michigan, if they get blown out, then they they got some questions to answer them. But I don't see them getting blown the out. Bunsen burner well, gets turned on on the seat. Let's put it but that way. You're talking about a head coach, but since Mac Brown actually took him to the college football playoff for the first time in school history, yeah, actually probably should have played for the national championship if. You were just threw a back shoulder fade instead of throwing a fade to Avion Mitchell. Uh, Shark is not on. The, it depends. It depends how the season. This game is not a must win, but if they get blown out. I kind of see where you're getting at. But they're going to the big house in Michigan, who have not lost a home game in September in like six years. I'm That's just saying. saying. This is a must. It's a must win, dude. You you've got to see that. It's so, a must okay. Win. If they lose, but they run the table and they're in the playoffs and they make the chance, so he's still. Wait, if they. No, no. If they win the, I mean, if they go undefeated after the Michigan, I mean, then okay, I'm I'm fine with that. I think, but this I, lights I, a fire. It lights a fire. I'm not saying it's Sark's chair, but it lights a fire. Like, okay, we have fire. If you blow it in a couple more games, then we're gonna have to start lighting stuff up. We're gonna start. I don't know. I don't know what the hell gaslighting is, but I'm not going to use it. But we're going to start lighting stuff, and that seat for Sark is going to be a little bit hotter. I can't, I can't say that for certain. This depends. Like if it's a like yeah, if it's like a 20 point blowout and Texas never in the game, never had a chance. Yeah, I can I, I can see that, but I just don't see it happening. I, like you said, uh, that Texas defensive line's fast. It's good. They have the skill players. Michigan doesn't have the quarterback that, and they they struggle against Brindle State. I mean, it's. I, I just I think Ewers coming back. I think the only problem I do have is the running back position. That's the if like we had Baxter, we we didn't have. We used to have the death, but now we don't have the death. It's all about JD and Blue or Jaden Blue. I don't know if he can. He got a little nicked up too last week, so I just don't know. That, that's not, that's my only issue. But they have the receivers, they have the quarterback, they have the defense, they have the cornerbacks, they have the defensive backs, they have the defensive linemen. That they're stacked. But can I see them getting blown? It's not going to happen. They're not going to get blown out. I well, think the reason why I say I if they lose, they're going to win by fifteen points. Well, if they lose to Michigan, it concern. I mean, I'm the only person concerned. I'm not even a Texas fan, and I mean, it concerns me if they lose to Michigan. But then you, you said you've got Oklahoma and Georgia back to back. You got the Red River rivalry. Then you've got Georgia coming to Austin the next week. So maybe two more losses there. That's three. Then, I mean, then you end the season with the rivalry of all rivalries from back in the day. Mm. You're going up against AM. And it's at AM. And it's at AM. So night. again, <laughs> now do you understand why I'm I saying this is it. a big win? This, this is a big weekend. It sets up the rest of the season for Texas because then you beat Michigan, you beat Oklahoma, you lose to Georgia. I think they beat Georgia. I think they beat Georgia too. Geo says otherwise, but I, I just because I, I think the games in Austin, I think I, they beat Georgia. Honestly, the only hiccup I see beats for Texas is probably either Oklahoma or A and M. That is it. The two rivalry games, right? Like you one don't of them. Play. It's like, going to be one. Year, Texas was the better team, but G- Gabriel played the game of his life. You and- throw the records out. Exactly. And it's rivalry. It's so awesome. that's what I'm saying. I don't see. I. I don't see Georgia coming into Austin beating Texas. I really don't. I, I don't see that. But, you know, people are going to say it's going to happen. And I really think that one of those losses is either Oklahoma or A&M, one of the rivalry games. But I circle the Michigan game because that this is when the season starts right now for Texas. This is they're still zero and zero. Colorado State didn't didn't matter. That was preseason. The regular season starts now this weekend for Texas, man. That's just me. I don't know, man. I just 
it's hard for him <laughs> on the hot seat after what he's done in recruiting and going to the playoffs last year. I just have a hard time no matter what. Now, I will say this. If the game was at in Austin and he gets lose, I can see that. But going to Ann Arbor, it's kind of a different animal, right? Like it's 105,000 people. They, never lost, they haven't lost a game in like five or six years in September and all. I mean, there's a reason. I, but like you said, Michigan's down this year. Michigan, this ain't the same uh, national title team that they had last year on the yeah. offensive side. The defensive side, but if you saw that, like, and I'm glad Nick Saban retired because we got Bond out of Alabama. We got, like, we got oh, yeah. people oh. feeling for Xavier Worthy and Winnington and all them. So I can see where you're coming from, but I just think it's got to be a little bit now. If they go on and lose to Michigan and they lose to Oklahoma and then they lose. They we have the Georgia. Georgia or Texas ain't it. I can see where you're coming from, but I just think everyone's happy with what Charkeesium's doing right now. I just, it's just oh, he, hard. He's to, doing a good job. He's doing good. I'm not going to die. The only thing that's scaring me is the media is starting to get on the Longhorns, and the Longhorns, every time the media gets on them and they start believing Texas is back, they falter. They they do. It's like because we're always at that teeter like right. with Sam Ellinger, right? Like we're back and then media's like, okay, they're coming and then we go eight and four or we go <laughs> six, six, or we like you know like it's just like well, it, can we override that? But this has this has a, everyone was worried that Texas is not ready for the SEC. I think Texas has been I think Sarkeesian's done a great job. I think he's built the offensive line and defensive line before the SEC. He has a skill, but I, I think Texas is more ready than Oklahoma. I would not have said that three years ago, believe that or not. But I think yeah. Texas is so I, I think Texas is one of the probably one or two in the SEC right now. I, I it's hard for me because Georgia's been there, done that. They have a fifth year starting quarterback. Ewers, can he stay healthy? That's another thing. Like, are you going to blame Sarkeesian? Like, if Ewers goes no. down, or like, you know no. what I mean? Like, because Ewers has yet to play a full, a whole full season because he's been injured. No, but I'm not blaming Sarkeesian for injuries. But I will say that you cannot use a Quinn Ewers injury as an excuse as to not why. You are, not when you have the number one recruiting. Match. No, because <laughs> Arch is ready. He and is, a lot of people ready. say, you know, oh, he needs another year, and it's a oh, good thing. I, no, no, no. Arch is ready. So if Quinn goes down, then Arch is good enough to come in and lead this team. Now, if they can't get it done, then, yeah, you go to the head coach. That That's that fault for – that's 100% on Sarkeesian. That, that, that's 100% on him. So that's why – for me, Texas season starts this weekend in Ann Arbor against Michigan at eleven o'clock. It's it's week one for Texas. This is week one. I don't, I'm Colorado State fifty two zero is what it is. That that was your preseason game. It, it was a pre, but it's hard, man, because they didn't go play like a cupcake team, like a like a no, they did like, play like Alabama did or whoever. Like Colorado, it's hard because they're. They're a Division One school, but they're not that good. Like you know what I mean. So it's like hard to judge. But I, I agree. I, I don't know. I guess we'll find, I agree with you. Like the season starts this week. It, it does. Yeah. yeah. No, it does. It does. And I like Joel Colon says so. That college gym sounds like a good idea. But then let's just stop the charade and not call these schools colleges anymore and call them NFL Triple A. Pretty really much is it. just a. It's like baseball. It's like triple A and double A right now for it's pretty much what it is in college football right now or any sport, basically. Yeah, it is. I mean, that's uh, that, that's what I'm saying is that it's you may as well just get a GM to handle all the NIL stuff. I mean, that's that's honestly I like the NIL, but I think there needs to be a hard cap, like there needs to be a cap on the NIL. That's what I think. Yeah. And, you know, FYI, we were calling about Crystal Ball and a lot of other people on the hot seat. Mike Norvell. Like Norvell needs to be gone. I'm sorry. You, uh, yeah, I know mean, he went undefeated last year, but be honest, he they had a cupcake had schedule. They, they didn't play anybody. Yeah, I know. Boo hoo! You didn't make the call. I'm sorry. You were going to get killed by any of those four schools that you would have played. <laughs> I'm sorry. You would have got killed with your backup quarterback who didn't do nothing but kick field goal. Like get you no kick field goals. I still say. Well, I still say Florida State wins the national championship. Last I had them winning national championship last year. I did, but that was with Jordan Travis. If Jordan Travis a get whole hurt, different team. might have had a chance. You might have had a chance. Yeah, that, that's a whole different team when it comes to Jordan Travis. Now, would I have 
Do I think they would have beaten Michigan last year? I don't really think there were very many teams that would have been able to beat Michigan last I year. I think Texas would have beat Michigan last year. They would have played. Mm, they matched might. up better than what Washington. Like it was weird. Washington matched up better for Texas, but Texas matched up better for Michigan. That's what I think. I think Texas would have given Michigan a better game, but I don't think Texas would have beaten. And you know, Geo makes a face of the fact. Oh, Georgia would have easily beaten Michigan again. There was. A couple of teams where I think could have beaten last year's Michigan squad. I don't think Texas was one. I don't feel Georgia was another. I really don't know who could have beaten last year's Michigan team. They, they were stacked from State. top to bottom. Ohio State. This is what I like about the Big 12, 10 this year. Yeah, but because, it's always uh, because Michigan. It was always Michigan versus Ohio State, the last game of the season. Yeah. And that both teams will be on it, but that's for who, like, because let's just face it, the other, like Iowa, Northwestern, whoever they play, like, that was a practice game for the playoff or whatever the case may be. Yeah. But this year, you have an opportunity, Michigan and Ohio State, to play the last game of the season and then play in the conference championship the following week. I'm telling you, if McCord would have hit, didn't throw that interception, would have hit him down the receiver down the middle of the seam, Ohio State would have beat Michigan last year. I'm telling you. Ohio State, if they would have played again, I think Ohio State would have got them. Who knows? Who they knows? Know. Who knows, man? Yeah, you know. Who knows? We got a, uh, we're going to do a real quick, uh, we're actually going to end the show here in a little bit, but we're going to get to a topic here from the WNBA. Uh, Joel Cohen actually brought up uh, this message to me. So all the credit goes to Joel for sharing this, uh, uh, this interesting stat right here. We, normally we end the show on an interesting stat. We get the reaction uh, from the panel. So, here it is. I'm going to go ahead and show it to you guys right now. This will be our WNBA talk. Let me hit up the WNBA bump real quick. Okay, so I did talk to Derek Gervin. He's going to be back on tomorrow. Uh, we'll talk about the NBA players going overseas with Derek Gervin as well. Some more WNBA breakdown tomorrow, which is probably going to be during the day uh, as tomorrow night's one of our nights that we don't go live. So uh, let me bring this up here so we can get the reaction from the panel. And that goes for everybody here. So interesting stat that Joel brought up. 17% of the WNBA flagrant fouls this season have been committed against Caitlin Clark. The Chicago Sky were responsible for 80% of the flagrants committed against Caitlin Clark. Now, FYI, there's... We at Sweep the League do not get into race talk or anything like that. It never comes up. We keep it strictly professional. We keep it strictly down, you know, the middle for everybody. Uh, Derek Irvin will tell you that. Shamaya, uh, Gio, everybody on the panel. We all say the same thing. We just keep it real. We keep it as is. But, you know, the stat is the stat. Chicago Sky. I don't necessarily. <sighs> it's so weird, man, because. Yes, Caitlin has been hammered a few times on the court. But to rule out just one team, yeah, Chicago has been that team that reminds you of what? The 1980s, the bad boys when it came to Jordan. Not saying Caitlin Clark's Jordan, not saying Chicago Sky's the bad boys, but they play a physical style of basketball. And just like Jordan back in the day, the bad boys played a physical style basketball, a la the Jordan rules, when it came to Michael Jordan. So, I don't know even know how to feel about this, Dad, man. But we go around the panel. So, what are your thoughts on this right here? It's interesting because it's that respect level going back to Angel Reese and Kayla Clark back to the. Uh, well, a couple of years ago when they played for the national championship and the injuries did all that. And then, but it go, and I kind of agree with the stat. It has to go with who's, I forgot that Chicago Sky player who purposely went after Caitlin Clark and pushed her and shoved her when the play was over. And like she has a hatred towards Caitlin Clark. She does. It, it goes back to, like you said, in the bad boy piston area. Like they, they just want to make her, I, I just don't understand it. I just, I don't get it. Like, I hate these stats because the Chicago Sky, I think mostly because the Chicago Sky are kind of frustrated as well because Caitlin Clark has had their number all year. <laughs> yeah. Like she, she, she scored the most points against them, most re assists, most rebounds. Like Caitlin Clark is just on, like there's just that one team where each player plays better against the team. And Chicago Sky is it for Caitlin Clark. Like Caitlin Clark just 
brings up her, I don't know if it's Angel Reese factor. I don't know. It's because they're both uh, like one, two in the rookie conversation or rookie of the year conversation. And but Chicago Sky are fighting for the eighth, the last playoff spot right now. I think the NFC were pretty much safe, but Chicago's kind of like like you said, that bad boy piston era. Like they they want to play tough, they want to play physical, and sometimes they just get a little too physical with Kalen Clark. I won't make them feel or or fill them. So I, it's interesting. I I just. But it's just weird because Angel Reese and Kevin Clark actually like each other. It's just that one player, yeah. one hour, well, I forgot her name, but just push and shove. Diamond to Shields, I think is what it was. Yeah. It was just Diamond to Shields. Yeah, but I, I just think that it's, it, I think the Indiana and Chicago are going to have this rubber as long as those two ladies right there, because they're, they're both going to be the face of the league coming up in the league. And it's a good place to have in the next couple, three or four years. They're going to have a great little rivalry. The, those two teams for the next 10 to 12 years to come. So it's going to be interesting to see. And I will say this, I do, I, I, I love Caitlin Clark. I, I do, but sometimes in the NBA is guilty of this too with LeBron James, Steph Curry and the superstars as well. They want to <laughs> say it. Derek says it all the time. They, 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 they want to protect their stuff more so LeBron than Steph. That's another argument from a different day, but they see Caitlin Clark as their money cow. They see how much, how much ticket prices go up when Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese play against each other. So they want to protect their product. And that's the way they're going to do. They're going to call them. They're going to be more eyes on Caitlin Clark than any other uh, WNBA star in the last 10 or 12 years. So that, I can see where the WMA, but it's just basically the LeBron James factor. Like, oh, LeBron, LeBron can do anything. Argue with the like, it, Caitlin Clark is not LeBron. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying Caitlin Clark is the money cow for the next decade to come because the tickets have skyrocketed. And I wouldn't be so sure on that. I wouldn't be so sure. Well, uh, honestly, AJ Wilson, man, she's doing the AJ Wilson, but I, I, I do I, like I, I, too. I'll tell you this. I'll be honest with you on this. And I'm, I told Derek on, on the show Friday, I believe, and he agreed 100% with it when I made the comment to him. And I'll make it again tonight when I said if Paige Bukers came out in this year's draft, she would be number one. I Kevin agree Clark would have been drafted number two. I totally agree with that. I wish Paige Becker would have came out in this draft, but she had made more money doing call. That's why he's female, David. She's making more money this year than she will uh, playing WNBA. That's sad, but whether the case, that's never here or there. But I agree with you. I think Paige Becker is a better overall ball player and better uh, better skill player. I, I can't on Clark and shoot the three is Steph Curry factor, but I just think Paige Becker could play defense, and I think that she can – she has a better overall, better game than what Kevin. Yeah, played. her skill set, but her skill set is just way much better than anything else. So, and that's what I was trying to, do, and I told Derek. Derek was like, "I can't argue with that," and we can't because yeah. I felt that Paige comes out this year. She's number one. Caitlin's number two, and then you know the draft goes however it goes. So, what's crazy is everybody's riding the Caitlin Clark. Oh, she's, you know, done this for the WNBA. But I, I tell people, you got to wait, wait, because the next year crop of cl- class coming out is is just as big. Paige, yeah. you know, Juju is coming out as well. Well, you also got to remember Paige Beckers was Caitlin Clark. Because remember, Paige Beckers tore her ACL. And, she yeah. play, and that's when the Caitlin Clark, but Paige Becker, people forget how good Paige Beckers actually was her sophomore, her freshman, sophomore years. Before she yeah. tore her ACL, like she was, uh, like a, I don't know if "stud"s the right word, but she she she, she was, was, next, she was, she was basically the next Maya Moore, basically. Like she was going to be the yeah, next big thing coming out of UConn. But then she tore her ACL, and I'm glad that she stayed healthy this year, and she got that extra year so she can play another year next year and rise her stock even more. And I do agree with you. Uh, Paige Beckers is going to be at, at these three girls: Angel Reese, Asia, well, Asia Wilson. And Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese, all that. It, it's good. WNBA's in a good spot right now. It, I played this about ten years ago, but it's it's fun basketball to watch. Uh, it's it's getting better. The girls are getting better. I mean, it, it's in a good spot. So I'm, I'm I'm happy that people are actually going to games now. Maybe that can increase their salary. Whether Caitlin Clark's not making making more off endorsements than she is playing the whole season in <laughs> WNBA. But can I, can I say this real quick about the WNBA? Sure. Can we move the schedule? Like, Angel Reese, Caitlin Clark, all these rookies, 
they just got done playing a national championship or a final four. And in a month, like they're already playing again in another season. Yeah. Like, you know, or if they say another year in college, they still have like four or five months. And that's what people don't understand is like, they're probably tired. The good thing the Olympics were this year too, because they got that extra two week, 14 days off that they really, uh, break. So I just wish the WNBA would start a little bit later because they do that. Then they have the draft and then the next month or three weeks are already doing preseason games and then they're starting the season. It's, yeah. it, it's kind of like, okay, give these girls a little break. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know Jill's been making that same case as well. So I I agree with that. You got to give the you got to do the schedule a little bit differently. But it's kind of well, when hard. we do it though, because you can't go against an NBA because they don't get any ratings. You can't go against the NFL. You can't go to the NFL either. So, so I guess this I mean, is like, I guess this is the right time to do yeah, it. But you, compete against baseball, which I mean, I'm not no disrespect to baseball, but people Baseball's don't really get until interested. Like September, until, October. Yeah, <laughs> until playoff times when it starts heating up. So it makes perfect sense for them to go right now. Uh, one last question here, or one last comment from Joel Colon. And how about that Cheryl Soup, Stephen A. Smith beef about Caitlin Clark? It's kind of funny. To me, it's kind of comical because, I mean, Cheryl Soup's one of the all time legends. Oh, she was phenomenal. I mean, I will say this one of the all time legends uh, is for, you know, is Cheryl Soup's. And I don't know a lot of the reasons behind what she said. I mean, Kaylin, you know, did it in less in more than four years, which is not true. She did it in four years. She broke the record, Kelsey Plum's record in four years. Same amount of time Kelsey Plum did. Um, she took 40 shots in a game, every game when she only takes like, I think, 18, 19, 20 a game. So a lot of stuff that Cheryl was saying was not true, I guess. It's, so, well, you got to remember it's, it's basically like the like the conversation with Jordan. If he, Jordan were to play in today's NBA, he would average sixty points, right? Like, they, they, like this stuff Curry effect. Like the game has changed. Where Kalen Clark can back when Cheryl Swoops was playing and Plum, they they were playing more team. That where now Kalen Clark had the the free freedom to shoot any ball that she wanted to. Where back in the day, even in men's college basketball, you played through a team. Like atmosphere, right? these top players who are averaging thirty points, but they only average seventeen points in college. But yeah. it's a Steph Curry effect now. Like, oh, any shot's a good shot as long as you can make it, and that's the effect that Caitlin Clark has. And she has a wear of thought, and she can she backed it up with shooting half court shots and everything like. So yeah, she can shoot a little bit more than what these other players have. So I hate these idiotic remarks. I just I just don't. And I love Cheryl Swoops. I I love like she's one of my favorite uh, women basketball players of all time. So yeah. I get it. I get it. And yeah, I mean, it's comical to me, but I don't know where Cheryl gets a lot of her info from. But you know what? Hey, everyone is entitled to their opinion. I'm not going to argue with you for your opinion. I mean, if you really want to believe the world is flat, well, guess what? It's flat to you. It's round to me. Big deal. Who cares? So yeah, I appreciate everything. Everybody joining on tonight. We had over 500 people on the stream tonight. So I appreciate everybody joining here. Go to our YouTube page. All you got to do is go to YouTube, search at Sweep the Lake TV, be a subscriber. We are to 363 people subscribed now. Again, that is in less than three months, I believe. We're right around the three-month mark when we rebranded everything. So appreciate everybody subscribing. We're still giving away giveaways. We're going to be giving away an Amazon gift card. We got NBA 2K, I believe, is coming out. If it's not out already, we're going to be giving away a copy of NBA 2K as well. The only way for you to do it is be a subscriber. Also, follow us on Twitter. Go follow Joel Colon as well on Twitter at Texarican77. Great guy, man. He's a part of the show here 100% of the time, uh, just like Tim Gonzalez is. So be sure to follow them. We'll be back tomorrow again. Schedule-wise, I know Monday and Wednesdays, uh, we don't run a show in the evening at 9 o'clock. We usually either play a replay or we go live during the day. If we go live during the day, we'll replay that show at 9 o'clock. So either way, you're going to get something from Sweep the League. Uh, at 9 o'clock tomorrow, but we'll keep everybody posted. Then we will be back again live on Thursday and Friday as well uh, to get you ready for the weekend. So, again, like I said, Derek Irving will be back tomorrow. Uh, I just talked to him a little while ago, so he'll be back tomorrow. Louis Luna, La Cucina Taco Truck, and man himself, man. Hit up La Cucina Taco Truck, man. It's in New Braunfels. 
Short drive to get satisfied, man. Great street tacos. Uh, yes, he has everything. Everything is good. So appreciate you joining in, Louis. Uh, fair warning. It's mostly political, LOL. Well, uh, hey, man, it's your Twitter. It's your access. You do whatever you want to do, man. You do whatever you want to do on your own page, brother, man. But I appreciate everybody joining us here. So, again, Derek will be back tomorrow. Gio will be back next week. He's on vacation. He's on a cruise. Uh, hoping the uh, best for him on that cruise. Hope he has fun. Uh, but for Trey Collis, it is Rudy Compost Jr. Until we sweep again, we'll see you later, Knuckleheads.